So in example five here, we're going to solve the initial value problem y prime is equal to t minus y and y of zero is equal to one. We're going to solve it analytically using what we learned uh, much earlier in this lecture series. And then we're going to calculate y of 0.6 and compare with the, the answer with the result given by Euler's method. We figured that out in example four. So let's go ahead and start solving this. I'm going to write y prime. I'm going to move the y over to the other side. y prime plus y is equal to t. And now this is a linear differential equation. And we learned how to solve linear differential equations in one of the very early lectures here in the differential equation series on educator.com. What you do is you find the integrating factor is equal to e to the integral of p of t dt, where your p is whatever the coefficient of y is right there. In this case, that's just 1. So that's e to the integral of 1 dt, which is just e to the t. And so you multiply both sides by that integrating factor. So we get y prime e to the t uh, plus y e to the t is equal to t e to the t. And then the point of that, this is what we learned in the lecture on linear differential equations, is that the left-hand side is the derivative of y e to the t using the product rule. Right-hand side is still just t e to the t. So we can integrate both sides. And on the left, we'll just get y e to the t because we're integrating a derivative. And on the right, now I'm going to use parts. I'm going to use integration by parts, which is something we learned about in the uh, Calculus 2 lectures here on educator.com. It was one of the early results there. So let me integrate t e to the t using integration by parts. This is using tabular integration. It's kind of a shorthand to solve certain integration by parts problems. So I'm writing derivatives on the left, integrals on the right, and then I'm going to put my alternating signs, plus and minus. So I get t e to the t minus e to the t. And I always have to attach a constant at the moment when I do the integration. And so I want to solve for y there. So I'm going to divide both sides by e to the t. So I'm going to get y is equal to t uh, minus 1 plus c divided by e to the t. That's the same as c e to the negative t. And that's my general solution. Now I'm going to use the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 1. So y of 0 is equal to 0 minus 1 plus uh, c e to the 0. And that's supposed to be equal to 1. And so what I see quickly here is that c must be 2 because e to the 0 is 1. And so I'll plug that back into my general solution. y is equal to t minus 1 plus 2 e to the negative t. And so that's my solution to the initial value problem y is equal to t minus 1 plus 2e to the negative t. And now I wanted to compute y of 0.6. So I'm going to plug in 0.6 for t. 0.6 is 0 0.6 minus 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.6, which it looks like that would be uh, negative 0.4 plus 2e to the negative 0.6. I'm definitely going to use my calculator for that. So negative 0.4 plus 2e to the negative 0.6. And that gives me, well, approximately, if I just take the first few decimal places, 0 0.6976 as an answer. And that's really an exact, well, that's very close to being an exact answer. Let me remind you what we got using Euler's method so we can see how accurate our Euler's method answer was. In Euler's, by using Euler's method, we did this in example four. So you can go back and check out example four if you're not sure where this is coming from. We got uh, y of 0.6. Our estimation from there was 0 0.58. So that's the estimation that Euler's method gave us. 
y of 0 0.6 was 0 0.58. The true solution, according to our analytic techniques, is 0 0.6976. So we got something fairly close, but obviously not completely accurate. So let me remind you what we did with this. We saw a linear differential equation, so I'm going to use my solution techniques for linear differential equations, and that's to use the integrating factor. This is coming from the lecture very early on in this series on linear differential equations. You do e to the integral of p of t, where p of t is the coefficient of y, so here it's just e to the integral of 1, so that's e to the t. Multiply that by both sides, that turns the left-hand side into the derivative of a product. So we're really kind of exploiting the product rule there. So if we integrate it, we just get that original product back, y e to the t. On the right hand side, we had to use integration by parts to get t e to the t minus e to the t plus c. And so solving for y, that means multiplying both sides by e to the negative t. This is what we get for our general solution. But then we use the initial condition, y of 0 is equal to 1. Plug that back in and we get c is equal to 2. So I plug that back into the general solution, and that's how I got my specific solution here, t minus 1 plus 2e to the negative t. And now to estimate y of 0 0.6, I plug that in for t, and I get something that I certainly wouldn't want to do by hand, but on a calculator, that tells me it's 0 0.6976. And I wanted to compare that with my answer from Euler's method. We worked out the answer from Euler's method in example 4. So that's where this number 0 0.58 comes from. We worked on that uh, just above in example 4. So that's the Euler's method answer. The true answer is 0 0.6976. And so you can see that 0 0.58 versus 0 0.69, we were fairly close with Euler's method, but we weren't completely accurate. In the next lecture here on uh, the differential equations lecture series, we're going to talk about the runge kutta method, and we're going to solve this same problem. We're going to see that we're going to get something much more accurate, and so um, we'll compare that answer with our Euler's method uh, answer, and we'll see that for the price of doing a little more computation, we can get a much more accurate solution. So that's the end of our lecture here on Euler's method as part of the differential equations lecture series on educator.com. My name is Will Murray. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.